Well, as a child of the 70s, as I built my first pyramid tent to enhance my ability to climb mountains and conquer the opposite sex, I did not realize I was going to do so because the earth, with its ability to store lots of energy, is a giant capacitor. However, as I watched the plethora of DIY videos on how to build a rat tail with tiny strands of wire, I couldn't help but wonder if the size of the wire might matter. A rat probably thinks his tail does. Anyway, data transmission requires thin wire that has low capacitance, we know that. Thicker wire has higher capacitance, like the earth itself. So wouldn't it follow that if you're seeking to create a virtual ground, you dose, you would uh, do so with a substrate that exhibits higher capacitance? Well, I guess there's a simple way to investigate some aspects of this. How about if we look at the standing wave ratio that is a consequence of different gauge wire? Let's do that here. So we'll start with having a look at maybe 12 AWG and then see if the fatter 10 has any advantages over the 12. This screen depicts the characteristics of unisolated IPX6 center tuned antenna at 165. By isolated I mean there is no human element that is in contact with any part of the system whether it be a speaker mic or hanging on to the radio itself. So with a standing wave ratio of greater than 1.5 let's just see what happens when I touch the antenna and lo and behold the standing wave ratio drops down to 1.28 so we see here that the operator also has a real-world effect on what we might assume to be part of the influence of a virtual ground plane. Now we're going to delve into this a little deeper by seeing what kind of influence that the counterpoise may have on it. Now what we're looking at here is what you can't see, the 10 AW, sorry, correction, the 12 AWG counterpoise is attached to the IPX6 165 center tuned antenna and it's just drooping down in an arc as you might tend to do when you're unsupported. And you can see here the result of that where you've got the best SWR right around 176. However, because this antenna is tuned to 165, we would prefer that we could find it to get a better SWR than 1.62. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that counterpoise and I'm going to put it up at about a 45 degree angle uh, against the, the vertical axis. Now. I've just got my fingertips on the tip and the rat tail is about 45 degrees and at our marker here it looks like we've got a standing wave of about 1.2 so we'll fly with that for now. Now what we're looking at is the 10 AWG counterpoise wire on that same 165 IPX antenna and we're looking at a standing wave of 1.057 so 1.056 which is an improvement over the 12 gauge wire and now let's just drop it down and see what it resorts to because it's a uh, thicker wire it doesn't droop quite as much but you can see here that we're back up to about 1.6 so there is a demonstrated advantage to the counterpoise and a further advantage to the thickness of the gauge however you do have to be prepared 
to position it in an optimal manner which in this case appears to be 45 degrees above the horizontal plane and that results in what we're looking at now of 1.03